my name is Joe Trolley and I'm the Executive Director for the Richland County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board. Um, along with being the director, I'm also a licensed professional clinical counselor um, and also a licensed independent chemical dependency counselor. I've been working in the field now for about 29 years. What do you look for? How do you know you're getting stressed? Big example is look at your memory. That is probably the biggest clue. When you start wandering into rooms and you can't figure out why you went into that room in the first place, or you've been home 10 minutes and you can't remember where you set your keys down, um, that task that you've been trying to accomplish and every night you go to bed going, ah, I forgot to do it again. These are indicators that you're probably dealing with a certain amount of stress and it can come from lots of different areas. Big suggestion and one of the easiest ways to deal with that <coughs> excuse me, is write it down. Start taking notes. Um, Post-it notes are a godsend for dealing with stress. During stressful times, I know you're usually this time of year as a board director, we're working on budgets and finance. I tend to get pretty stressed out. You'll start to see more notes on my desk. And it's just notes of do this, do that, and then you can check them off as they're accomplished. Writing things down helps to process. It also gets things out of your head. Uh, things that are in your head are very difficult to control, but when you get them on paper, you give some level of control. Again, distress comes from things that are uncontrollable, so you want to move the uncontrollable to controllable. Um, other things you can see, sleeplessness, lack of exercise, overeating, undereating, just major changes in behavior are usually stress indicators. Now, how do we determine how stressed we are? Well, one of the things we can use is a stress inventory. And I always share one of these. This is a very generic one. If you go online, you can find stress inventories for teachers. You could find stress inventories for mental health professionals, stress inventory for probably media and reporters. Um, there's different inventories for everybody. And what it does is it ranks, usually from one to 100, different types of events in your life. So with this one, 100 is the death of a spouse. And I would say that's really the death of anybody who is a close support system for you. Move down the list, they put a 28 as an outstanding personal achievement. Um, that's a good thing, but sometimes getting to that point takes a lot of stress and takes a toll on us. So don't necessarily think that these are classified as both positive or negative. What you do is you go through, you look at everything that's happened in the past 24 months and you add them up. If your numbers add up to zero to 149, you're in good shape. Odds are you are not gonna have any stress-related issues based on what you're experiencing. You get into the range of 150 to 299, that tends to be medium, medium susceptibility for stress-related illness. Stress-related illness can come from a lot of different areas. We've seen, the ones we know about, we know that if we get stressed out enough, we could have stomach problems or ulcers. We can have migraines. But we also lower our immune system, so we become more susceptible to things like colds, flus, probably COVID-19, whatever's out there. Um, we also tend to be more accident prone because we're more distracted. So we tend to be more prone to physical injury and things like that. So we want to make sure that we're reducing our stress quite a bit. If you're at 300 or higher, that's pretty high susceptibility. Statistically, about 40 to 50% of people who score above 300 may become ill within a year due to their immune system shutting down. And only about 5 to 10% of those below 200 experience the same problems. So it's real important that you make sure that you're addressing those stressors as they're occurring. Uh, the other technique I'll take you through is progressive relaxation. And this is again, you start out with your feet flat on the floor and close your eyes. It's always easier to do it with your eyes closed. That way you tend to think nobody's looking at you. Um, you start by with your toes. You're going to scrunch your toes up and hold that for five seconds and then release. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna scrunch up your feet from your ankles, so you're almost gonna lift your feet up, and you hold that tight for five seconds, and you release. Then you'll move to your calf muscles, and you scrunch them up for five seconds, and then release. 
They'll then move to your thighs. In order to do your thighs, you're scrunching up those butt muscles. Squeeze. Hold for five seconds. And then release. They'll then move to your abdomen. You're going to squeeze your abdomen for five seconds. And then release. At this point, I usually like to switch to my hands. And I will scrunch my fingers up. Ball them into fists for five seconds. And then release. You're going to do very similar because you're using the same muscles to do your, your forearms. So you're going to try to tense them, curl your fists in. Hold it for five seconds and release. Now with your arms, you can do biceps, triceps, whichever works best for you. I always usually look at the triceps because I just flex my biceps trying to do my forearms. Um, you're going to tense up your upper arms, hold for five seconds, and then release. At this point, you're going to move to your chest. And again, you're going to flex for five seconds. And release. At this point, you should be feeling a lot of tingling going on throughout your body. As you move up, and again, this is something, if you're in private, go ahead and continue on up the neck and into the face. If you're sitting in where people can see, you may not want to do that. Um, but when you get to your neck, you're going to use primarily your jaw and you're going to clench up and then release. And you're going to move into your face muscles is where you're going to use your eyes and your and your lips and you're just going to tense up your face and then release. And at this point you should be feeling fairly relaxed. Again, you should feel a little bit of tingle throughout your body, and you should be ready to move on with your day. So that is progressive relaxation, and I hope you enjoyed it. These should be some techniques that help. There are lots of information out on the internet, but most importantly, take some time for yourself. Most people forget to do that when they start getting stressed out. You need that five, ten minutes, take an hour, read a book, do something that allows you to get away for a little while.